Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of SNUSAT Prep, we're going to be looking at some sample questions from chemistry. Now, SNUSAT is an examination that is the, considered as the entrance exam for Shivnadar University, so therefore, it's got uh, subjects ranging from physics to chemistry to mathematics. So, we're going to be looking at some sample questions from chemistry. Here comes our first question. The mutual heat of neutralization of 40 grams of NaOH and, 50, and 60 grams of CH3COOH will be 57.1 kilojoules, less than 57.1 kilojoules, more than 57.1 kilojoules, 13.7 kilojoules. So which of these is the right answer? Well, a part of this question is static, which means you got to know the stuff, but some other parts of it, you have to work it out. Now, we need to find out the heat of neutralization. What we have are NaOH, or sodium hydroxide, and CH3COOH, which is acetic acid, more commonly known as vinegar. So, we have 40 grams of NaOH, and 60 grams of acetic acid. So what happens when we undertake a reaction from them? So NaOH plus CH3COOH would give us CH3COONA, that is sodium acetate, plus water. Now, <clears throat> let's find out the molecular weight of both these compounds. So we have sodium, mass 23, oxygen has a mass of 16, hydrogen has a mass of 1. 23 plus 1 gives you 24, 24 plus 10 is 34, 34 plus 6 is 40. So the molecular weight of NaOH is 40U. But notice that in the question we have 40 grams of NaOH. So that means the number of moles of NaOH is 1. So we have 1 mole of NaOH present in the question. What about acetic acid? For acetic acid, we have two carbons, so 2 times 12, plus 4 hydrogens, so 4 times 1, and 2 oxygens, so 2 times 16. 2 12s are 24, 4 1s are 4, 2 16s are 32. So 24 plus 4 gives you 28, 28 plus 2 is 30, 30 plus 2 gives you 60. So the molecular weight of vinegar is 60 unified mass, mass units. And therefore, since we have 60 grams of acetic acid, then that means that the number of moles that we have is 1. So in the question, we have 1 mole of NaOH and 1 mole of acetic acid. We need to find out the mutual heat of neutralization. But how do we calculate that? We need to look at the compounds themselves in general. Now, NaOH, or sodium hydroxide, is considered as a strong base, which means it dissociates to give a whole lot of OH- ions. However, acetic acid is actually considered as a weak acid because of the fact that the H plus amount that's released by it is low. So therefore, we have a strong base and a weak acid. And both of them have equal number of moles present. So in this particular condition, the heat of neutralization, the mutual heat of neutralization, is always going to be a value that is less than 57.1 kilojoules. So therefore, the right answer is option B, less than 57.1 kilojoules. The reason why that's correct, because we have the conditions for that particular case to occur. We have a strong base reacting with a weak acid, and both of them have equal number of moles present, so therefore the value is always going to be less than 57.1 kilojoules. 
So all the other options are incorrect. Now let's look at another question. Which of these has the smallest size? We have aluminium 3+, plus, magnesium 2+, plus, potassium 5+, plus, and A+. Plus. So basically we have a set of positive ions. Now when it comes to positive ions, the higher charge of the ion is directly proportional to the smaller size. So ions with a higher charge would automatically have a smaller size. Now why is that? The charge in an ion basically refers to whether you have a gain or loss in electrons. So a positive charge, an increased positive charge, means there is more electrons lost. And that would, and that particular um, condition, more electron loss, would lead to a smaller ion. The reason being that there's more electrons lost, so there are some of the shells disappear, so therefore we have lesser electrons present, and the positive charge is more than the negative charge, which then forces the electrons to come closer to the nucleus. So a higher charge in the positive sense is proportional to a smaller size. So when we look at the options, aluminium has three electrons lost, magnesium has two electrons lost, these are stable ions by the way, potassium has five electrons lost, and Na has one electron lost. So the highest charge among the following is option C, um, potassium 5 plus, so therefore that has to have the smallest size. Na plus is wrong, it has the least size because it only loses one electron. Magnesium is also quite, the magnesium ion is also quite large because there's only two electrons missing. Aluminium has only three electrons missing, so it's going to be larger than the potassium ion. So therefore, the potassium cation P5 plus is the right answer for uh, which of the ions being the smallest size. Now, let's look at the final question for today. The treatment of benzene with isobutene in the presence of sulfuric acid gives isobutyl benzene, tert-butyl benzene, n-butyl benzene, no reaction. So, how do we solve this question? Well, we need to we have benzene and isobutene present. So isobutene is written down as this particular structure. So basically you have a carbon having a double bond with the CH2 and then having a uh, single bonds with other methyl groups. So therefore you have CH2 double bond C, CH3, CH3. So this is isobutene. Now <clears throat> we have benzene and isobutene. They are treated in the presence of sulfuric acid. Now this particular reaction is called an addition reaction. Now what happens? Sulfuric acid here is a strong acid, so what it's going to do, it's going to break this particular double bond. And you have H2 plus and SO42 minus. Now what it's going to do, um, one of the hydrogen ions is going to react with the CH2 group here that is broken from the double bond and that forms CH3. On the other hand, the second hydrogen ion would go here, um, the other hydrogen ion would go here, and then that is going to stabilize it for some time, but the main reaction that's going to happen is that this particular group here, CH3CCH3, that is going to attach itself onto the benzene. Because the benzene has extra hydrogen, so you can so it goes over there. It needs some more um, connections. 
So in the end, what we're going to get as the product here would be a benzene ring and it's connected to the C with two methyl groups and then what happens is that the methyl group that's formed from the other side of isobutene is also going to attach itself to the benzene to the carbon so that carbon has a space for one more bond and that bond will be fulfilled by a third methyl group so this is the particular structure that we're going to get this is our final product so if it were isobutyl benzene then it would have just two then it would have a different structure n-butyl benzene is also different so therefore since there is a reaction that's occurring here called the addition reaction so option D is also incorrect the right answer is option B tert butyl benzene so this particular um, this particular product that we get by the treatment of benzene with isobutene in the presence of sulfuric acid is called tert butyl benzene option B is the right option now that concludes this episode of SNUSAT prep we hope you found this episode interesting for more of such videos please don't forget to subscribe to our channel which is agile rank mate if you want to get the latest updates from our channel then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video so until the next webisode so until the next webisode take care stay alert bye bye for now